Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're figuring out how to sharpen scissors. Let's dive in. Most scissors are designed to be sharpened. They are a relatively hard steel, um, but they're still a little softer than a file, so you can easily clean them up. Now, there are some modern scissors that are very, very hard. I don't have any of those here that you actually need diamonds to do them, but for most, you can do it with a file. I use these diamond paddles from DMT, Diamond Sharp, and I'll leave a link to them down below. They come in coarse, medium, and fine, and I generally just use the fine unless I need to do a lot of work, I'll take it back to the coarse. But you can do it with just a regular file something really really fine the finer the better first thing I do is inspect the scissors and these ones actually have some gunk build up on them I let my daughter borrow them and they came back with this like sticky substance so we're gonna clean that off I use a little bit of denatured alcohol just give them a good scrub and that should be about all they need that's enough that they once again cut but they won't slide and I really want to fix that so that they slide oh no he cut paper with scissors Relax, it's okay, that's why we're here, we're planning on sharpening them. But it is kind of an old myth. Yes, paper will dull the scissors slightly faster than cloth, uh, but not that much. It's just more or less that moms over the years didn't want their kids using these for craft projects because they're the nice scissors. My favorite test is this poly semi-flexible fabric. It is just painful to cut. It usually won't cut at all, it takes a lot of work. And all three of the scissors I have here um, have a problem with it. None of them like it. If the scissors need a lot of work, I'll actually take them apart if I can. Some of them are riveted and you can't take them apart, but a lot of them have a screw that you can re remove and take the two pieces apart. Today, I'm just gonna be touching these up. They're really close, but they just need a little more work. Scissors are basically two pairs of, scissors are basically two chisels that run past each other. They each run on the flats and they have the bevel out. So if we look at the jaw, we've got the flat on this side and this side, and then we have the bevel here and here, and we want to focus on the bevel. I almost never touch the flat of the scissors. I do it when I need to do a lot of work or if I really need to clean things up. Sometimes I'll come in and do it. You see, I've touched this one a few times over their life, but this pair of scissors is incredibly old and it's still got a lot of life in it. This back is actually a hollow grind to it. Most of the time, for almost all sharpenings and touch-ups, I'm just gonna to be touching the bevel on the main face here, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. I like to do it in a vise, though sometimes I'll do it freehand. I'm just gonna put it in here and clamp it down. If you're new to sharpening, you might find it a little bit tricky to get the right angle on the file. You want it to match the current bevel. So what you can actually do is move it up and down in the vise until you find that bevel so that now you can rest it on the back here and just move it along and have the correct file on there. With a file, I'm just going to do a draw filing. I'm just going to be pushing it along and it usually only takes a few passes until you get a slight burr on the backside here. With a diamond, it's a little bit finer, so it's going to take a couple more passes. So I'm just going to take my time on here and clean it up like that. And that's really all it takes. I'm going until I can feel a slight burr on the back here. After that, we can take them out, flip them over, and do the exact same thing on the other side. At this point, we have a burr. It's a little piece of metal that's sticking up on both of these plates. And I can feel it ever so slightly as I run my finger around there. I could just grab the scissors and close them and it will slice that burr off. Or I could come into the fine file and just take the burr off with one or two passes on this side. Now we can take them for a test drive on this demon fabric. Just like that, they cut all the way to the tip. But do they slide on paper? Well, let's see, we get a full cut all the way to the tip, and then we see, just like that, happiness. Sometimes scissors are a bit loose and you want to tighten them up a little bit. With this old pair, there's actually a bolt that needs to be tightened down a little bit. And then we can see a little bit more. I want them to be easy to use in the hand and I want to hear the zing of the scissors all the way along. I don't want them to be so tight that they lock in place and they, they hold each other together. And then some of them like this one actually have a locking nut on the other side to lock it down in so it's not gonna move. Most of the good ones just use a flat blade screwdriver, but some of them are actually riveted, and to do that you have to peen them over with a hammer. There are a bunch of myths that come with scissors. Number one, cutting paper. Will it destroy the scissors? No, it will dull them faster than most fabrics, but it won't destroy them. They'll still be perfectly functional scissors, they just will need to be sharpened more often. So is it bad to cut paper? Not directly, but understand you'll probably need to sharpen them more often if you do so. 
Number two, you can sharpen them by cutting sandpaper. Uh, that is an old myth that is completely and totally and 100% absolutely false. Um, the, no, you are going to dull the scissors by cutting sandpaper. Uh, imagine just putting them in sand and grinding them in. You're going to dull them. That's what cutting sandpaper is. It does not sharpen them. It will dull them. Uh, so whoever told you that was, um, yeah, didn't know what they were talking about. Number three, you can sharpen them on the neck of a glass bottle. And honestly, there's a little bit of truth to this. Yes, you can actually make them slightly sharper. You're not actually sharpening them as in removing steel, but you are burnishing them, which is still taking that burr. It is moving the steel on the surface rather than grinding it off. So yeah, you can do a little bit by burnishing them on the neck of a glass bottle. It won't do as much work, so if the scissors are really dull, it's not gonna help. But if you're just keeping them there, that's actually not a bad idea. Now, everything I've been talking today are about standard fabric scissors. And that is the, the standard method I'm gonna use for all my scissors. Now, if you're gonna be getting into shears and hair cutting scissors, those often have a very different bevel on them. It's the same principle and the same idea, the same method, but it's gonna be a little bit more careful because that edge is much finer and it will dull much faster. These having a much fatter angle on the bevel means that they're going to last longer and they're gonna be more durable, but they're not gonna be quite as keen and as fast to sharp as you would with hair scissors. So I hope this answered some of the questions and I know there are a lot of other questions out there. I actually have another video that I did a while ago where I talked about sharpening scissors, just a slightly different method. Uh, so if you wanna see that as well, I'll leave a link to that down below. But if you have any questions or things I missed, things I should talk about, let me know those down in the comments down below. I read through all of those and I answer as many of them as I can get to. Um, and if you're watching this a long time in the future, I'm probably still watching those. So if you still have questions, throw them down there and I will answer as many as I can. And thank you, that actually helps out the channel. Anytime you put a comment down there, even if it's just comment down below, thank you. That helps the channel, helps us grow and helps us get in front of more people. So if you like content like this, think about doing that or hitting the like, share, subscribe, uh, or even going even farther and hitting the thank you button or becoming one of these people over here. Those are all the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon because without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewers. Without patrons, members, people who've clicked that thank you button, uh, we wouldn't be here. You guys keep us going and thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, well, you know what to do. Link down below, click the thank you button, all that stuff. <laughs> I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Sharpening your own scissors, that's just sheer madness.